In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the for each method to loop over an array in JavaScript. Disclaimer. The for each method calls a function for each element in an array. So if we want to be very, very precise, for each is not a loop like for or while or do while is. But the outcome of this method, which we use on array, is very, very similar, if not almost exactly the same. How it works. Here you see an example on screen of how the for each method is used to loop over our student's array. We see that we're calling the for each method on our variable of students, and then we're passing in a function and we're saying, okay, log out to the console, the string name of student, and then add the respective element, which is currently in the loop. Now, the last line is to show you how you can use the for each method when you're using arrow functions. This is a newer way of writing functions. I still tend to use the traditional way, so that is the upper for each statement, but just so that you see how to use the arrow function, I've added it to this screenshot as well. Let's have a closer look at what actually happens on the first iterations. So we see that this function student that we're passing into the for each method, this student stands for the current element of that iteration or of that loop, if you want to call it that. So on our very first iteration, obviously that's Elena. And that's why when we're logging out to the console, our string and the value of student, that's going to be Elena on the first iteration. So I like to think of this student as kind of like the placeholder for whatever element is currently in the loop. And please also note something. I believe it's best practice to have the variable name of an array, the plural of whatever name you're using, and that parameter, in this case student, the singular value or name of whatever you're using. So in our case, we have an array of students because we have multiple students and on every single iteration, we're talking of student. I just think that it makes it for me clearer when I'm reading my code in the future again, but obviously it also makes it clearer for whoever is working with you on this specific script. If we have a look at our second iteration, Barish is going to be the student that's going to be logged out to the console. Why? Because for each, kind of like has a counter built in, you could say. So it knows that once it's handled one element, it automatically goes to the next element in the array. So unlike the for loop, by the way, there's a video to the for loop that I'm going to link right about now. Unlike that for loop, you don't have to set a counter and increment it. The for each method does that all for you. Index argument. Now, another difference between the traditional for loop and the for each method is that you don't need to use the index to loop over your array with the for each method, but sometimes you might need it. Maybe you need it to output it. And that's what I'm showing you here. You can use the index as an optional argument when you pass in your function. So note how here on our for each the function we're passing into that method, we have student and then comma index. So that is the optional index. And here I'm just showing you how you could use this to lock this out. So that's why you see the output would be Elena and zero because that's index zero and so on and so forth. And again, the last line to show you is how you would write this with the arrow function. And note that with arrow functions, as soon as you have more than one parameter, so not only student, but also index, this has to be enclosed with parentheses. Leave us a like if you've learned something new in this video. And I suggest you subscribe to this YouTube channel because the next video is going to be all about the wow and the do wow loop. We're going to compare these two and I don't want you to miss out on that video or any of our upcoming videos. So go ahead and subscribe 